Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Rob Built. I'm your host, Rob. Today we're gonna be doing a breakdown of how much the Casita Conejo has made me on Airbnb in the last month. But before we do, it's 105 degrees outside, so we're gonna go inside, not here, but my house. New take, new take. All right, let's do this thing, I'm ready, baby. So we're gonna head inside for the breakdown. Cool? All right. You didn't, you didn't, seem, you didn't, you didn't seem to like that. Yeah, you said breakdown twice. All right, am I in focus? Mm. All right, and we're inside my house and it's only been 15 minutes since I recorded that in <laughs> Ow, my leg. I gave myself a cramp. And it's only been 15 minutes since I recorded that first intro, not 15 days. Uh, no, yeah, it took me a little bit of time to actually get to this video because I was planning it out for a while, but I did wear the same shirt for continuity and I did get the first haircut that I've gotten since the beginning of the pandemic. I feel like a new man. Uh, no, it is looking fresh though. Fresh Today we're gonna to be talking about how much money my tiny houses have made me and if they panned out to be good investments. Spoiler alert, they have. Really quickly, I just wanted to say before I get into this, uh, my intention for making this video is not to brag about how much money that I've made. I really feel like I try to be as transparent as possible on my channel about personal finances and side hustles because A, I'm a regular person, you know, I'm like a regular guy, and B, I want anyone who wants to get into the Airbnb game or the tiny house building game to watch my content. And I want you guys to feel like you can do it too because I really don't think it's that hard. It just takes a little bit of effort and hard work and you know, hopefully by watching my channel, it inspires you to you know, do the same for yourself. So with that, if you're at all interested in becoming an Airbnb host, I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below. When you sign up with that link and you host your first day, you'll get a $60 bonus from Airbnb and I'll get a little kickback too. So if you find this content helpful at all and you wanna support me, sign up with that link and uh, It'll be a win-win for you and for me. For you and for me. Help me fund my Chipotle burritos. I'll also leave links to both of my tiny house Airbnb listings down below for you to peruse and you can check my calendar anytime you want and see how booked I am and manually calculate how much money I'm making if you don't believe me in this video. I didn't get it. So let me quickly break down how much it costs to build each tiny house. The one here in LA in my backyard is an accessory dwelling unit. That one cost me $72,000 to build and that's because I did a lot of the general contracting, project management, and a lot of the work myself. My tiny house in Joshua Tree, California cost about $165,000 to build start to finish, which is about twice as much as my LA build because I had to hire a general contractor to complete that entire build since I live here in LA. I had to buy the land, I had to put in a septic, the carport, the balcony, the sprinkler system, all stuff that I didn't have to do here in LA. So there's a reason that it's a lot more expensive. And I will tell you what, sir, do not build tiny houses that are expensive and then put them on YouTube because you will get a lot of flack for it. I've gotten so many negative comments from people that cannot comprehend why tiny houses cost so much to build. Mostly because A, in their minds, tiny houses should cost $33 to build and they've probably never swung a hammer in their life. And B, they probably live in Peepatumba, Wisconsin, where real estate is very, very cheap. And so they just scoff at the idea of spending so much on a tiny house. I'm just gonna read you some of my favorites. Unnecessarily expensive and unnecessarily small in such a wide open space. This would make much more sense in a dense city. This looks like a glorified dollhouse. Dang, this is very expensive for tiny home. You can get a house in Georgia for 180,000 and get five bedroom with a big yard. $165,000 for a tiny house is like making vegetarian meatballs. That's a good one. 165,000? You lying SOB. A tiny house like that costs $20,000 max. <laughs> I wish. But it's all good. Most of y'all are very supportive. I would say 90% of comments are very nice and uh, you know, very uh, encouraging. And uh, you know, when I built these things, I knew that I was taking a risk, but I also knew it was a calculated risk. I knew what I was doing, kind of. Okay, I've talked enough, so let's get into the numbers. But before I do, since I am revealing some pretty personal information, if you wouldn't mind doing me a favor and hitting the like button and the subscribe button down below, that's gonna help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Also be sure to click that little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified of any of my uploads, so you can be hooked up with more Airbnb, tiny house and real estate content from me. And of course, follow me on Instagram at Rob Built for more of my day to day, you know, tiny house shenanigans. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the last two months, which were July and August, which is really at the height of Rona. And uh, we're gonna start with the LA tiny house, which is right out here. You'll see here in my Airbnb portal that I basically had a reservation from June 29th through July 31st. Now, since we are talking about July specifically, I went ahead and prorated everything, but you'll see that this reservation was $2,444.39. But once it was all prorated for 
30 days in July. That gross revenue came out to $2,295.51. That was how much I made total. Now we're gonna get into the expenses since that is something that people ask me quite a bit about. So my cleaning fees were $120. This is something that I don't really use in my calculations in some of my other videos. And people are always asking me in the comments, why don't you include cleaning fees? And there's a really specific reason for that. I don't pay cleaning fees. The guests pay the cleaning fees. So for me, it's not really an expense because it's passed over to the guest. The guest pays me the cleaning fee and then I pay my maid that cleaning fee. But overall, that's not really an expense that is factored into any of my bills or costs. But I went ahead and included it here just to be thorough. Um, so you'll see gross revenue, $2,295. Cleaning fee, $120. And then for my bills, my bills for my LA tiny house are pretty low. You know, I have a mortgage, not really a mortgage. I have a loan note on it, which is a very high interest at 7.54 percent amortized over seven years. The loan amount originally was $45,000. I now owe about $27,000 on that note. But monthly, that is $691 a month. And then my uh, electricity and water are bundled together. That comes every two months. But roughly, and this is probably estimating a little high, I spend about $50 a month on electricity and water for that tiny house. It's probably closer to like 25 or 30 but just for the sake of padding it a bit. And then my insurance for this house is not lumped in with the insurance on this house. I have to pay its own addendum and rider. So that's about $50 a month. And then supplies, which really comes down to toilet paper, shampoo, paper towels, all that kind of stuff. That runs about $25 a month. I mean, I split that with my own house because we buy all that stuff at Costco. And then we just take that stuff out of our closet and put it out there. But roughly speaking, about $25 to pad it a bit. So if you go down here, I've added it up. My total bills for my LA tiny house is $816 a month, roughly. And uh, my gross revenue is $2,295. Again, my cleaning fee, $120, $816 for my bills. And that means that my net profit for my LA tiny house in the month of July was $1,359.51. And in August, you'll see that again, 100% booked for the most part. Uh, someone here snuck in on me. So I have two reservations. Roughly speaking, uh, for the month of August, I had about mm, $4,700 of gross revenue in my tiny house here in LA. So we'll go over to my spreadsheet. Again, I've prorated all that. I've already calculated what I've made. So in August, my gross revenue was $2,583.25. My cleaning fees were $240. And then again, my bills, 691, 50, 50, 25. About the same, it doesn't really change all that much. This one is pretty dialed in. So again, my gross revenue, $2,583. Uh, my cleaning fees, 240. My bills, expenses, note, all that kind of stuff, $816. And then that means that my net profit for the LA tiny house was $1,527.25. For July and August on this tiny house, I made a profit of $2,886.76. Now keep in mind for the most part, I am hosting travel nurses back here at a very high discount. Uh, you know, if I was doing just regular short-term stays, this number would be much, much higher. Now I should go without saying that I'm not a graphic designer or an artiste. <laughs> None of this has been Photoshopped to pull one over on you. These are all numbers straight up from my actual portal. To fake this would cost me a lot of time and a lot of money. Hey bud, I need you to Photoshop some stuff for me. And my newborn daughter has decided oh my that God. more than she likes. Oh, <laughs> scared me so bad. So those are the numbers for my LA tiny house, but things definitely get a little bit more interesting as we dive into the numbers for Casita Conejo. So hopping into my Airbnb portal here, you'll see that I was 100% booked in July. The only time that I had an opening was on July 27th. And that's because I stayed there on July 27th for the first time ever since actually owning it. So it was actually nice to go and experience it. So had I not booked the 27th for myself, guarantee that I would have had a 100% occupancy. Um, so it's all good. Um, but I had about 17 reservations here. I had a really big reservation coming from Richard here uh, from the past month, so I already prorated all that. So let's go ahead and hop into the spreadsheet here. We'll go into July. This is my Conejo monthly accounting spreadsheet. This is nothing fancy, of course. I actually formatted it a little differently for this video just to make it as clear as possible for y'all. But you'll see that my gross revenue for Conejo in the month of July was $5,174.83. Gross revenue, $5,174.83. I had a total of 17 cleanings for the month at $70 per cleaning. That came out to $1,190. And then my bills were $850 for the mortgage, tax, and insurance. This is another question that I get quite a bit on all my comments, like how much were taxes, how much were insurance and all that kind of stuff. The reason I don't include that into a lot of my calculations is because that's already added into my mortgage. So when I say that my mortgage is $850, that means that it includes tax, title, insurance, all that jazz. So 850 bucks for that. My electric bill was $74.82. 
sense. My pest control, my pest control, control was $100. My water bill was $39.48. Trash, $38. Internet, about $60. I think it's a little less than that, but 59 something, yeah. So when you add all that up, my monthly expenses are $1,163.14. So if you subtract my cleaning fees and my bills and expenses from $51.81, that leaves you with a monthly profit of $2,821.69. And that was in July when I was a little bit more timid with my pricing. I wasn't really sure how things were gonna pan out with the Rona. So my prices were a little bit lower, but once I was 100% booked, I realized I didn't have anything to worry about. So I actually jacked prices up for August and uh, we can hop into that now so let's just go into my august portal just to show you exactly basically uh, how booked i was so in august i was also 100 percent booked for the most part with the exception of one day i blocked off the 16th for a different shoot which is actually whenever i shot the intro so i blocked that off for my own personal use i ended up leaving a little bit early around 5 p.m and i opened up the calendar but i forgot that i had a minimum stay on it so it was literally impossible for someone to book it last minute uh, i'm pretty sure that if i didn't have this minimum stay on it it probably would have been booked just based on the fact that I was booked in July 100% and in August 100%. So for the most part, my bookings, they were at a higher price. They were a little fatty. So let's get into how much I actually made for August now. In August, I made a gross revenue of $5,601.75. I had a total of 15 cleanings at $70, which came out to 1,050. My bills were pretty similar to July, obviously. It fluctuates a little bit with things like electricity, but for the most part, the same. Those came out to $1,248.90. So whenever you subtract my cleaning fees and all of my monthly expenses from $5,601.75, you'll see that I had a total profit, a net profit after everything, $3,302.85. So again, I've got my calculator here. So let's go ahead and just add up what we made here uh, over the past two months in the Conejo tiny house. So that's $2,821.69. And then in August, $3,002.85. So in July and in August in Conejo, I made a total profit $6,124.54 for two months profit. My take home after all bills was $6,100. Pretty good. Uh, very happy about that. Like I think September is gonna be even better because I've also raised prices yet again because I'm starting to find out that people love my tiny house. And so if I've got a premium listing, I've got good reviews, I've got a highly sought out Airbnb, you should jack the price up. Just a little pro tip here. If you're booked 100%, your prices are too low. So the idea is to keep jacking up prices until you're not booked 100%. So I'm still kind of playing around with that. My average nightly rate was anywhere from 159 to 189, but now my nightly rate is 199. And then on weekends, it can be up to $249 a night. And I think even as far as October, I have weeknights at 225 and weekends at 249. I always price the months that are further away at a much higher rate because planners, people who are planning trips and everything, they're typically willing to pay a little bit more to get the place that they want far in advance. So I, I raise prices for that reason. Typically that's a strategy that works for me. So now let's go ahead and add up my LA tiny house numbers so that you can see a full picture of how much I made in July and August on just two tiny houses. We already have 6124 plus 1359 plus the month of August. Uh, that comes out to, let's see, 1527. So in July and August on both of my tiny houses, I made $9,011.30 profit. Again, that's my take home. All of my bills and all of my expenses are factored into that roughly $9,000. So if we want to kind of uh, use that number to kind of guide how much I'm going to be making the entire year in profit, uh, since that's two months and there's 12 months in a year, we just multiply this number by six. I can expect to make $54,067.80 on both of my tiny houses for the entire year. Um, that's good. That's a lot. I'm really happy with that. I mean, like I said, I started with not a lot and I've been able to get this snowball rolling. And so now I kind of feel like, you know, on a snowman, I feel like I have the base of my snowman with these two Airbnbs. And then of course, like my glamp side and everything like that. But it really feels nice to know that like two years of my life, I spent every moment that I had devoted to building these houses. And for the rest of my life, in theory, I will make roughly $54,000 a year until the day that these houses are paid off. And then of course I'll make way more than that. So now the golden question, how many Chipotle burritos is that? Well, I'll tell you, $54,067.80 divided by, let's say roughly $7.50 for a Chipotle burrito comes out to 7,209 Chipotle burritos. That's how many Chipotle burritos I can buy in a year with my tiny house income. So I guess you could say 
things are getting pretty serious. I thought you were on a diet. That's a lot of Chipotle burritos. I'm really excited to be making that perpetually for hopefully the rest of my life, unless I sell the house, of course. But to every person out there that thought I was an idiot for spending so much money on a tiny house, I just have one thing that I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. What do you think about my tiny house investments? Are they worth it? Is it something that you'd want to do for yourself? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm kind of curious. For me, I think it's a home run because it's very rare in real estate where you can turn over this kind of profit, this kind of ROI. I mean, in a long-term rental situation, you have to consider you're making way less. Many rentals you could make no money, you could break even. If you make 100 to $300 a month in cash flow on a long-term rental, sometimes that's a good deal for some people. But for me, I'm closer to $1,300 to $3,000 of profit. So significantly better than a long-term rental. I think the power of Airbnb is infinite. I have never really paid myself uh, for any of this. I've always reinvested it into all of my rentals and Airbnbs and everything like that. But the idea is that if I work hard for the next one to three years doing this, then you know I can make a lot more money and I can you know quit my job, so can my wife. And we won't have to worry about money. We can YouTube full-time, we can run tiny houses, we can build cool things. And uh, that's really my dream. I'm chasing my dream, I'm living my dream, and I really couldn't ask for anything more than I'm getting out of life at this exact moment. If you wanna get into the Airbnb or the tiny house game and you don't know where to start, I offer consulting services, so I'll leave my email right here. Feel free to reach out with any questions or if you wanna set up a session, I would be more than happy to help you. And again, if you found this video helpful and it nudged you in the direction of becoming an Airbnb host, be sure to sign up with my link down below for a bonus. And again, I get a kickback, so that's a small way to support my channel and fund my future adventures and my future ventures for what I have planned in 2020 for this channel. I'm currently in the process of outlining two different courses. One is how to start an Airbnb from A to Z. The other one is how to start an off the grid Airbnb experience out in the middle of nowhere, basically. Uh, two different courses. I think I'm gonna do it, but let me know in the comments down below if that's something that interests you. The more people that are interested in that type of thing, the more likely it's gonna happen. And if a lot of you are interested, then the quicker it's gonna happen too. So let me know in the comment what you would wanna see in a course like that. But for now, I think we're done. I think we're good, right, Ellie? Maya? Okay, cool. I'll catch you on the next episode of Rob Built.